I was of the mindset, you know something? This ain't going to be no damn series. Toronto don't have the horses. They don't have anybody to help Kawhi. They don't have anybody else other than him to stop the bleeding. What the hell are they going to do? That's what I was thinking. And then game two comes in, and Milwaukee just ramrods the Toronto Raptors, blows them out of the state of Wisconsin, just beat them up, jumped out to a 35-21 lead in the first quarter, and never looked back, up by 25 at halftime, never looked back. And I said, damn, this ain't even a game. And then game three showed up, and I predicted that Toronto would win that game because that's the one game in this series I thought they would win. And they handled their business on their home court. Although Kawhi Leonard got hurt early in that game, came down, looked like his knee buckled on the floor a little bit. Um, and as a result, <clears throat> he didn't seem to be himself the rest of the game, but still played valiantly, still defended against the Greek freak, still held the Greek freak to one of nine shooting whenever he was guarding the Greek freak. Giannis said that the Kumpo, for those of you who needed me to make sure I say his name. And as a result, you pull within 2-1. But I expected the Milwaukee Bucks to come out last night and handle their business because I didn't expect the Giannis, uh, Giannis uh, and the Tacumpo would have a second consecutive bad game. I thought Middleton and others would step up. I thought they would clearly hit some perimeter shots. And as a result, Toronto would have no choice but to fold. This series would be 3-1, going back to Milwaukee, and Milwaukee would close them out Thursday night in Game 5. Well, pump the brakes. Because, ladies and gentlemen, if you look at what's transpiring, if you pay attention to what is going on, and you really, really watch, you're seeing a Toronto Raptors team that seems to have figured something out. Kawhi Leonard is hobbled. He's not himself. Doesn't matter. Kyle Lowry drops 25. Kawhi Leonard is not himself, not the offensive juggernaut that he has been throughout these playoffs. Doesn't matter. Marcus Gasol suddenly has hit three. He's hit seven three-pointers in the last two games. Games three and four, Marcus Gasol has hit seven three-pointers. Then you got a situation where you're looking at guys like Norman Powell. Shot 13, three, 13 three-pointers. Only hit four. But damn, was he aggressive. You look at Fred Van Vliet, he hit a couple of threes. You look at the production off the bench, overall, Milwaukee got outscored 48 to 23. Brogdon got held to four points. Ila Silva was a non factor. Danny Green, what was he doing? And still, Toronto won. Eric Bledsoe has not been impressive, to say the least. And Toronto has now notched the series. Now, if you pay attention, you see what has transpired. And what has transpired is very, very simple. Whether it's Brooke Lopez, whether it's Mirotish, Miritish, rather, I'm sorry, I don't know why I keep mispronouncing his name, Miritish. Whether it was uh, Ersanias Ilalasova, Ilalasova, you put these guys in situations where they got a guard, you switch and you make sure they're guarding somebody on the ball. They can't do it. They can't do it. And as a result, it's problematic for the Milwaukee Bucks in terms of what they want to do defensively. They're compromised because of it. It makes them tight offensively. And there you have it. They look like a shell of themselves, fully incapable of doing whatever it takes. This is what we're looking at when we're talking about the Milwaukee Bucks right now. And the only thing, if you're the Milwaukee Bucks, that looks good for you right now is that Kawhi Leonard may not be healthy. He may have done damage to that left leg. We don't know yet. But he was hobbled all last night. And somehow, somewhere, you got to figure it out. This is what the situation is right now. The Milwaukee Bucks went from having this series locked up after two games to being on the brink of being on the brink of elimination. The series is tied 2-2. It goes back to Milwaukee Thursday night. They've got to show up. And oh, by the way, Let's not let the Greek freak off the hook. Yes, he had 25 and 10. He started out in the first quarter with about 10, 12 points. He was relatively quiet the rest of the way. That's number one. Number two, they were a minus 19 with him on the court. That almost never happens. Number three, Middleton had 30. They were still a minus 17 with him on the floor. Number four, Brogdon, where was he? In the sofa, where was he? Connaughton, where was he? Bledsoe, where is he? 
This is what the situation is. It's not pleasant right now, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to tell you, it's not pleasant at all. And the Toronto Raptors are on the cusp of taking a 3-2 lead in this series. The Milwaukee Bucks have to show up. And by the way, all of this noise I was making about how the Milwaukee Bucks would win the world championship if it wasn't for KD, if, if, if KD is not healthy, I take it back. Ain't nobody beating the Golden State Warriors. Nobody's beating them. Unless the Golden State Warriors suddenly can't shoot. Nobody's beating them. Because you see, that's really, really the difference, ladies and gentlemen. You watch the Milwaukee Bucks. They're missing free throws. Milwaukee ain't, I'm sorry, Golden State ain't missing free throws. Perimeter shooting disappearing because they're contested shots with somebody in, in, in one of their faces for Milwaukee. That ain't going to make Golden State miss shots. You take away one playmaker, what you going to do with the others? That ain't going to happen to Golden State. When you look at Looney and you look at Cook and you look at McKinney and you combine that with Draymond and Clay and Steph and Iguodala's going to be back now. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got problems. We got problems. Not only can the Golden State Warriors be expected to win the championship, they might steamroll through the East. They might sweep people. We didn't expect them to sweep Portland. Got my man Charles Barkley on the air giving apologies because he swore Portland was going to win, was going to go to the finals. That's not what happened here. Because Golden State is something special. They make shots. They make shots. And so somehow, some way, you're going to have to figure all of this out. Because if you don't, Lord help you. 